You know, I think the last thing to, to touch on too, I know we had talked about this ahead of time, things like Inspire. I don't know if oh, yeah, you sure. wanted to yep. kind of touch on that. So I think, um, you know, ENTs uh, in general, I think the knock that we sometimes get is like, you know, now that this Inspire device came out, which is like a pacemaker for the tongue, essentially is what it, what it does. So there's a pacemaker that gets implanted in the chest. There's a little incision under the chin where you find the hypoglossal nerve. So usually there's like a little sensor that goes between the ribs. There's an IPG or pacemaker type device. And then there's a little wire that gets attached to the hypoglossal nerve that when you turn it on at nighttime, kind of every time it senses a breath, it'll stimulate the muscle of the tongue to move forward. So you fall asleep. And when it kicks on, every time you breathe, the tongue moves forward and then relaxes, moves forward and then relaxes. Is this unit surgically implanted? That's underneath the skin? Correct. Yeah. That sits on the pec muscle. So that's, there's an incision over the chest where that whole unit, so it's similar to, it comes from pacemaker technology. Oh. So, so that gets implanted, sits under the skin, and then all of these wires are under the skin. So there's nothing exposed uh, um, in terms of the, the wires or anything like that. It all runs under the skin. I think, um, I think it can be a great option in the right patients. And I think that the important thing to know is, you know, there's a lot of different causes of sleep apnea and anatomy is only one of them. Uh, and so you think about jaw structure, really important thing, you know, almost all of us are skeletally deficient. And so um, I, that's an important component, but there, there was a study, there's a, a group of, of kind of respiratory physiologists at Harvard, Boston, uh, or Mass Eye and Ear that has published a lot of work on these different um, kind of phenotypes, it's called of sleep apnea, where, you know, it's not just anatomy, there's muscle tone that comes into it. And so one of the thoughts maybe is that, you know, if your jaws are underdeveloped for long enough, the muscle kind of just burns out, you know, your, your tone um, burns out so that when you're older, all of a sudden, you know, even if you do an MMA, the tongue is still falling backwards or the muscle is still collapsing. And so things like this can help improve the muscle tone, especially in older patients. So, you know, probably average age is like 65 for patients that get this Inspire. So it's a pretty non-invasive, you know, hour outpatient surgery to do that. Um, but then there's things like something called loop gain, where it's like, it's a very obscure thing, but it's essentially ventilatory instability where you kind of, your breathing stops, your carbon dioxide levels kind of rise. And then all of a sudden, you breathe a bunch and your carbon dioxide gets too low and then you breathe, you stop breathing and then it rises and you just kind of keep over and under shooting. That's more common in like cardiac patients. Um, and then there's some things like arousal threshold and arousal threshold is what we think about like light sleepers. And so if you have a low arousal threshold, even small changes in breathing are going to cause these micro arousals where your brain is getting woken up out of sleep. And so a lot of these patients, we think, you know, maybe the UARS spectrum, some, some of those patients also have a low arousal threshold where, you know, it's not bad enough to, to be classified as sleep apnea, but the breathing is deficient enough that causes all these disruptions from sleep. And so you wake up fatigued and you have all these symptoms of sleep apnea without, you know, desaturations or drops in oxygen level. And the group at Mass Eye and Ear basically published that most sleep apnea patients, I think it was, uh, I, I can't can't remember the exact quote, but it was almost like 50% have at least two of these phenotypes. So like anatomy may be one, but they're also deficient in muscle tone or arousal threshold or other things. So, you know, just doing a jaw surgery on every single patient with sleep apnea is kind of missing the point and trying to figure out like, you know, my job is trying to figure out how, what are the interventions we have? And like after a dice, after a sleep endoscopy, I'll be like, okay, well, you know, again, I have a different population that's not only coming to me for jaw surgery, but it's like, you know, we can do Inspire, we can do a pharyngoplasty, we can do an MMA, you know, are, are three different ways that we can go and then let patients decide based on kind of, some people are like, I want the least invasive or shortest recovery, or I don't want you to, you know, do any kind of bone bony work. Um, so I think there's different ways to treat sleep apnea. And I think the important thing again, is that it's not all a size of the room problem. I think that's an important part of it. But there are all these other nuances that cause sleep apnea, and it's important to kind of keep that in mind. Could you see Inspire being even a complement to a jaw surgery? Like after a jaw surgery, six months later, you're still, you know, tongue still falling back. You throw the Inspire in, and then boom, you yeah. have. Yep. So, so you know what's really interesting? I had a patient who got Inspire about five years ago. He was, I think, in his late forties now and did not work for him. So, you know, he can't, he got it from, from an outside guy comes in to see me and I'm like, you're super skeletally deficient. I mean, by max deficiency, upper and lower jaws are set back. 
whole airway is really small. I put him to sleep and did a dice with the Inspire on. Everything's just totally collapsing. He's still stopping breathing like 45, 50 times an hour with the Inspire. And so we ended up doing an MMA on him. So, you know, I'm like, hey, let's leave the Inspire in because we don't need to take it out yet. Let's do your MMA. The MMA, I think we brought him from like 70 to 28. So, you know, he had significant improvement, but like not technically a surgical success because he still has moderate sleep apnea. Once he, you know, recovered from that, we were able to turn the Inspire way down because now his airway is way more open. And now he's using the Inspire every night after the MMA. And now his residual AHI is like 10. Wow. So, so that's one where like, I think, you know, and Stanley Lou, you know, when I talked to him a couple of years back, there's certain patients that like probably need multiple interventions uh, where, you know, the MMA can get you so far, but especially if you're older, if you've had skeletal deficiencies your whole life, like an MMA not be enough to change the muscle tension in the airway. Like your, your muscles are too old to kind of retrain and tighten, even though the jaws are forward. And so they may need multiple interventions.